Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Sunday Summary. I'm your host, Kyle. With me, as always, is Steve, and today is the bounce-back day for Liverpool Football Club against Crystal Palace after a less than stellar week. But Steve, how are you doing this morning, man? It's good to see you. It's good to see you. It's good to be seen. Oh, yeah. Let me it just is. say that, yeah. first and foremost. Um, hello to everybody that's joined us so far. Uh, I think you hit it right on the head, Kyle. It hasn't been a good week. Um, and with that, I think we're in trouble. I'm just going to leave that there. Right off with the negativity. Yep. Right off with the negativity. You have a lot of optimism about the bounce back. I mean, I'm trying. I'm trying to be optimistic, man. You got to be optimistic, and with what six games left in the season? How many games left in the season? Four, five. I'm gonna pull up the table. Or you're it's gonna unbelievable. Pull up the table. Oh, by the way, Allison starts today. That's Finally. huge. I guess six months. For, it feels like it's unbelievable. Um, I was hoping we'd see Trent. Let me share my screen with everybody here. The lineup just dropped. Good morning to everyone. Kenny G, Supreme Architect, Hannah. My mom, good morning, mom. How you doing? Oivan, Liz, shout out to everyone. Make sure you like the stream and let me know what you think of the lineup. All right. Oh, Steve, Steve, Seven Steve. matches left. Seven, okay. Seven? Confirm lineup. This is a, a little bit of an eyesore, isn't it? But I'll deal with it right now. All right, we got Allison in goal. Robbo, Virgil, Kanate, and Bradley from left to right across the back. Endo, Curtis Jones, and McAllister in the midfield. I would have thought we went with Soboslai today, but it doesn't matter too much, I suppose. Uh, or dog hopefully shit. it won't. Hopefully it won't. <laughs> Let me just throw that out there. He's been dog shit. He's been pretty bad, yeah. Uh, Luis Diaz, Darwin Nunez, and Mo Salah across the front line. The boys. Tell me, guys in the chat, everyone, let me know or tell me how you can fall off a cliff like Sobosly has. It was all injury. It's all injury and rhythm. That's all it is. It, when we started the season, he was the best player in the league, Kyle. Yeah. In the injured. whole league. Yep. Wasn't for the injured. first month. Gets injured. Look at Oxlade Chamberlain. I'm bringing him up. Dude was amazing. Best midfielder in the league. And then gets no, injured. I wouldn't go that done. far, but he no, he he definitely. But we knew. We knew about his inconsistencies before he even joined the club. Who? Steven, are you tired and grumpy today? More so grumpy, I'd say, Liz. Um, Do you want to tell everyone what happened this morning? No, I don't. You gotta, bro. No. Oh, we're not, we're not getting into on. that. Ah, all right. I tried, guys. I tried to get you some good content. It's okay, though. Oyvind says, don't curse Sobosly with that name. <laughs> What's Ox doing? He's in Turkey now, isn't he? I don't know where he's at. I think what so. Hell's he do What's he hell? He's at uh, Besiktas, I think. Maybe. Oh, dude. Best of the net. Shout out to you. World War III is on the horizon, guys. Liverpool winning in the last is the last of our worries. Least. Oh, least. Jesus. I'm telling you, man. I'm I'm optimistic, but Crystal Palace is a team that you can easily lose to if you're not careful. Yeah. I mean, we we're awful lately. Awful. There's what no happened? Two. What happened? There's no we, two ways about it. We have been awful. What happened? Dreadful. Week, what happened? You watched the Atalanta match. I was working. I couldn't watch it. But mid what? Yeah. Yeah. What mid happened? week. So Klopp disrespected Atalanta. Put out a weak lineup, in my opinion. And because of that, we struggled a bit because of the lineup, I think. And then they just simply wanted it more. They took their chances. They were clinical. Kelleher couldn't stop anything. Um, but in fairness, they had some pretty good goals. So 
hats off to them. They deserved it 100%. I'm not going to say we beat ourselves in this one. We got beat fair and square at home. The streak is over. And uh, you have to win today, convincingly. You can't go down early. You can't fight the whole game from behind and hope for a miracle at the end. You're home. You have to crush Crystal Palace. I, as I said before the show, I was hoping we'd see Trent today. I think it's nice that Allison's back. At least it shows that there's some progression on the injury side of things. Who knows how he'll perform? Uh, hopefully he's just as good as he always was. And um, yeah, I'm glad Sobosly's starting on the bench. Front three picks itself for me. Sala, Nunez, uh, Diaz. I'm cool with that. I like the midfield. And I think the back four is fine as well. I, I would like to see Trent in there for Bradley, but maybe he's just not ready yet. Um, I can almost guarantee you'll see a, a what do they call it? Cameo? <laughs> An appearance later in the match. I think we'll see Trent get on today. He's been on the we'll bench already. So. I think Jota and Trent will come on. Yeah. A-team. Uh, it was funny. I was just talking about this the other day. I don't have any info. Uh, I noticed that recently that Dominic just stopped or hadn't uploaded a video in a few months. And um, I, I hope everything's okay. I've seen him post on social media and stuff. So I think everything's fine. Maybe he just stopped doing YouTube. I, maybe he just took a break. Sometimes you just need a mental break. I'm not sure. I'm not one to, uh, to guess, but. Yeah, we hope Can he's he okay, but. Yeah, I think um, I think he's okay. I think I've I've seen him post on social media, so I think he's okay. But Kelleher was poor. Kanate was poor. Gomez had a bad game. We did not press. We're sloppy in midfield. Basically, we were not in the mindset too passive. And look, I'm gonna ask this question because someone asked it in our comment section, and it it was something that I kind of glanced over, bro. Like I didn't really give it too much thought just because I'm not there. But the protests for the ticket prices occurred that match. I guess Liverpool are going through a 2% increase for ticket prices for the Europa League quarterfinal. And to my understanding, it's it's yes, it's an increase, but it's one of the lowest across all the leagues. Um, certainly lower than inflation. And to do the protest is absolutely their right, right? But how much do you think it affected the atmosphere and led to the 3-0 defeat? I think it probably affected the atmosphere, but it's no... You don't need an atmosphere to beat Atalanta. We crushed them a few years ago. I'm not, I'm not putting that in as a reason why. I mean, for the atmosphere being maybe a little weak, of course I wasn't there, but I did read some stuff about that. Um, sure. It could affect the atmosphere. But at the end of the day, you're home. You're invincible at home. And yeah. you get crushed 3-0. Um, as that it pertains might... to Gomez, Gomez is getting a lot of heat for the shooting, of course. We saw that comment here a second ago. Um, when I watched that match, there was no doubt he was not on top of his game. But he he seemed like he wanted it. Like, there were guys out there that just couldn't care less. Thank you for I, using I think, that correctly. Yeah, I think Gomez wanted it. I think he played with heart. And when you're getting beat, that's the best you can hope for. When you're getting smoked at home, that's the best you can hope for. So I say hats off to Joe Gomez. Um, All right. Not a good performance, but I want to give him that shout out. Joe, I know you're watching this right now, uh, 48 minutes before the match. So, yeah, Joe, Joe. Joe's dialed in. He's got his beats on. He's in the locker room like this, just watching the Sunday summary. Yeah. Just getting pumped. Thanks for playing with heart, Joe. Seriously. We need some more of that. Win, lose, draw. You have to You have to give it your all. A lot of guys didn't. Queasy, what's up, man? Dermot's in here. Uh, I saw another regular. Kenny, what's going on, man? Um no, where'd he go? Damien. What's up, Damien? How you doing, man? Big victory would be nice, but we take a 1-0. Three points, clean sheet, back on top right now. We've been rattled lately. Just get the win and move on. It's all anyone can hope for at this point. And so, uh, Aylor brings up a good point that the ticket prices have been frozen for seven seasons. Now, of course, I'm not a local, so I, I don't want to like project my opinion in there, but I do 
feel like from the threads I read on Twitter, um, especially uh, Francis Plateau or Plateau made a uh, a uh, a thread and gave his opinion. His opinion was pretty strong against the Liverpool fans protesting that at that time, especially given it was a lower increase. So I don't want to give my opinion on that, but I feel like you got to leave that. I, I know you got to do it during the match, right? Most protests occur during the match, but dude, we go on to lose three nil. Like there's a correlation there. We don't lose at home. And then we lose three nil on the night of a protest. It's such a minor, minor increase. I I it, it, I know it. Like, has what are to we happen. doing? If you think about inflation and a typical raise that a worker would get, it it in ninety percent of cases it's higher than two percent. Especially, if the, I didn't even know that the ticket prices had been frozen for that long. Yeah, and I that's can't absurd. That, but it just seem to me that seems very, very minimal. But again, I don't, I don't, you know, the people of the city can obviously, you know, attest to their opinions on that. But how often do you protest? Like, you get upset with price increases, and you kind of like, you know, bitch about it with your boys. Like, oh, dude, I remember when, when the, when these were six dollars, and now they're ten. You know, like, you know, but yeah. I don't know, protesting the prices for two, I don't know about that, man. Now I get it. If there's like a severe increase for like an away match or so, or like uh, say there's like an away leg or something and they like double the ticket prices, what they're normally are. That's one thing you can protest. I get that, but a 2% increase. I don't, I don't know. It's so minimal. It's so ridiculously minimal. Yeah. I, I just wanted to get everyone's thoughts on if that had an effect on anything. But uh, Dermot, yeah, team news is out. Thank you, Liz, very much. This is the starting 11 today, if you guys hadn't already seen it. And uh, I want to take a quick break real quick and just remind you guys, we'll be over on TIFO today. Um, I will post the link right now in the chat. This is the link to the watch along. Uh, use referral code Kyle in all caps. All right. I'll have it uh, going across the bottom right now. But this is how we're going to be doing watch longs from here on out. So make sure that you guys go over and create your account completely free. Uh, what do they say? Uh, no uh, toll free or whatever they say. Uh, completely free. Go over and create your account today. Uh, hey, here we go. Alor here says, Listen, Liverpool is a socialist city. It's their job to take a stand and be united against the capitalism. Okay, okay. Then I get that a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Oreos are six bucks. <laughs> I don't get that. That's Dude, a box of Cheerios. Honey nut Cheerios, but still Cheerios. Six twenty nine. Oh my gosh, I'm going to lose For sleep some over this. Cereal. I'm going to lose sleep over this. I can't believe it. I don't want to go into that. But make sure you guys go create your TIFO account. All right. So I want to share my meme of the week. I didn't do it the last couple of weeks, but I'm a big fan of these. Because, you know, especially with some of the negativity going around the club right now. Guys, let's just love it. All right. Jurgen, this is the best meme of the week. Have you seen these? They're going around with everybody, Steve. So this is um, it's uh, Lil Yachty's walkout. Have you seen this video? Yeah. Uh-huh. And they're just AI's just replacing it with everyone. <laughs> That's great. Oh my god. Oh, I'm a big fan of that. So that's our meme of the week, guys. Here we go. The late challenge. What's going on here? The late challenge did a good job of summarizing the broader context of the price protests. I'm the late challenge. Is there a reason why that's all uh, capitalized? Is that a show? Must be a show. Um, but yeah. So Steve, going into Crystal Palace, do you have any predictions for the match? I know we the lineup. I know you don't want Sobosly in there. I still think Sobosly is in our strongest starting eleven. 
this should absolutely be a win, should it not? 100%. It should be. But the last two matches should have been wins as well. So I just hope they can turn it around, put in a good shift, and get the three points and move on. Like um, starting 11. It's. Or Crystal Palace. Like, I don't think Arsenal are going to lose today or drop points against Villa. I don't know. I think they're going to crush Villa. Oh, don't say that. Don't say that, man. Oh, now they There's got one for there. Allison. Oh, God. The AI's already done it for Allison now. Oh, God. Those are good. Dude, I... I'm still, I want to remain optimistic that Aston Villa can maybe, maybe pull out a draw. You know, you never know. Queasy E, $27 for double shot drinks of the show I was at last night. Crazy tribal seeds. Tribal seeds is great. Reggae. Tribal seeds, yeah. I, I, I'm, I listen to more country than I do reggae. Reggae shows are... Epic, man. I'm sure they are. Queasy, do you like Soja? I've seen Soja probably 12 times. Jeez, 12 times, huh? Yeah. And here we go. Alor says, both Easy and Olise got ready for this match, and that's important for them. They are fighting against relegation, so this will not be easy. Nothing easy in the prem. Of course not. Crystal Palace, I think their spot in the table doesn't do their side justice in terms of the quality they have, at least in my opinion. But I think we're at home, right? Just get the job done. Make a statement with this. Klopp said midweek, you have to respond. If you don't respond, you don't have character. Right? You, you lose 3-0, that's got to be a, a gut punch. You know what I mean? That's got to be a blow to your, your ego in a way. Especially given how good we are. To Atlanta and Skameka. It's just so brutal. I can't even. I, I wanted a race for my memory. It's. I here's the thing. I'm having a hard time envisioning them turning it around and crushing Crystal Palace, which is what they would have done a month ago. I can't picture it. So, I hope because you're a pessimist. Yeah, I mean, we have no reason to be positive, Kyle. There's no, there's no there's no reason to be positive. We've been awful, dreadful. Draw to Man United, got absolutely crushed midweek. And then the two games before that were sketchy as well. I believe they were Brighton and Sheffield. Which we both won. Sketchy games, though. Sketchy matches. We won based on our quality, but we didn't dominate those matches. I think we dominated Sheffield... Towards the especially the second half. Well, it took us till late in the game to pull away. Okay, look, look, look. Let's just go back to the fact that you just said we have nothing to be positive about. All right. Okay. If you're a manager and you're in the locker room and you're talking to your team, are you saying that? Well, I'm not a manager, <laughs> so no. No, I said if. I, I know you're not. I know you're not a manager. No, Klopp's not saying that. No. Okay. He, he, it's his job to pick up pick up the boys. It's not my job. Okay, so in the other side of that argument, would you say it's our job to be critical? A hundred percent. Okay, absolutely. So it's this our is job. The to Sunday be, summary. It's absolutely our job to be critical. But you got. How are you not positive? Why are you optimistic right now? Let me ask you that. Let me let's flip this around. I'm optimistic for my own sanity. If that's okay. all it is, it's it's. I might in <laughs> the right. back of my mind, I might think to myself, "Holy crap, we might lose," but. I'm still optimistic because what what fun is it going into the match thinking, oh damn, we're we might lose today. It's more fun to go through life thinking we might win today. Allison might might score. Well, that, that's that's a good point. Allison back. That's that's a case for some optimism, I guess. Though Kelleher's been fine, aside from maybe last match. I think he's been pretty. I think he's been pretty good. Um, Queasy says, at least we're home. That's that's a good point. I wonder if there will be a protest today. Wouldn't be surprised. 
we we would right. know. It would be going on right now, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't have the matchup right now, or the pre-match, I should say, but I'm sure there is. Maybe, maybe it's just a one-off. I know Tony made a comment on our members-only uh, video that you know he felt the protest kind of ruined a, everything a little bit. He didn't really give his his input, but I'd like to get Tony's input on that. I know he's probably at the match right now, but um, what a legend! He's just an absolute goat, man. He got he got me a scarf. Like my my first Liverpool scarf sent from Tony. Yeah, I got one over here too from him. He sent you one? Yeah. Oh my god, he's so amazing, dude. Shout out to Tony, man. At, Tony, Liz, Oyvin, Qu all of our channel members, man. Just shout out to you guys. You guys keep keep the channel going. Uh Kenny G, what's up? Uh the inter I said what's up to Kenny like four times. The international break caused some issues, fatigue, jet lag, plus the injury and squad rotations due to them. We have not had our best 11 start all year. You know, I always, I saw this randomly. This will make its rounds on um, social media, bro. But the final we played against Tottenham, that was the only time that starting 11 played together all season. Is that not crazy? And you think back to who that. it was? It was Matip, Van Dyke, Rabo, Trent, Wijnaldum. Hendo. Who was the other midfielder that played that day? Was it Milner? Fabinho. Did you say that? Yeah, it was Fabinho. Fabinho, Wijnaldum, Henderson. What a midfield. But anyways, and then Bobby, Mane, and Sala. The only time that team played all together, which is kind of insane. It is insane. I've seen that graphic before. It's nuts. Oh, my God. Hannah, what's going on? Damien says, finally, someone with sense. No way we would be underestimating Palace, especially the way we've been playing. Ease and Elise will give our defense a test today. This is what I'm saying, man. Dude, Damien, every team in the Premier League can beat you, except for maybe Sheffield. All right, but every team in the Premier League, and Brentford, pretty bad. But um, Alexander, big up. Thank you. Uh that's why this is the hardest league in the world, man. If you take your foot off the gas for a minute, you're down 1-0. And we've done that probably 15 times this year. How many times have we been down 1-0 this season, bro? 15. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Jaden Banks? Is he a player for us? Dan's, I think he means Jaden Dan's. Jaden Dan's, okay. I want to call. He him is Tyler. good. He is, dude. Did you see the back heel he had against United in the U twenty ones, U eighteens, or whatever? That was pretty dirty. Oyvind says, "No way, I'm going to be afraid of Palace at home in a title race. No one's afraid of Palace, but you gotta play your best football to beat Palace. We've lost to Palace at home before." Very rarely can you say we've lost at home to a team in the last, like, five years. Okay? And Palace is one of them. Back when... Is Zaha still even playing for them, or did he leave? No, he's gone. Dude, that's what I thought, man. Zaha destroyed us that day. I felt uh, like every time we faced Palace, it was Milner <laughs> playing, like, right back against Zaha. <laughs> that's all I think about. 20 times... We've gone down one nil this year. I, I hope that's accurate because it it feels like damn near every game. Uh oh, even says we can play shit and still beat them. Uh, what do we got here? The players have to show composure and show that they can put the ball in the back of the net. Absolutely. Uh, twenty times is a sign. There will be a reaction today up the Reds. Kuda, appreciate it. And again, guys, all of you guys here appreciate your support every Sunday. We love. Having you guys here chatting with you. Um, so make sure you like the stream if you're enjoying it. And for those of you uh, channel members, again, we appreciate your support. Uh, the channel takes money to run behind the scenes. So we do appreciate you guys paying every month. That really helps the channel go with the, the software and thumbnails and things like that. So thank you very much. And again, remember, guys, we're doing the watch along on TIFO. Okay, I'll post the uh, link right now for you guys to go over and create your account if you haven't already this is also the link to the watch along today make sure you go over there 
And uh, your referral code is Kyle in all caps uh, to get in. Steven, who scores first for us? I'm going to say Salah today. I think so. Salah. Salah's good. I want to see Curtis. I want to see Curtis score so bad. He's due for one. He's been injured for a long ass time. Kenny says, when we win, I want Steve to smile. (laughs) Look, I'm happy overall. I'm just. Steve will call me after a win and be like, Kyle, we suck. We suck. Did you see us play today? I'm like, Steve, we won 3 0. It's like, yeah, we had two pens and a tap in. We suck. <laughs> I was so heated at the night of that Man United match. Oh, my God. After well, that, the match I reaction. Get... Oh, dude. Yeah. So the match reaction, Steve, right after the fact, but Steve called me later that night and um, it, it, it all hit him. It was like a delayed fuse. And God, some of the things he was saying were making so much sense. I wish we had the record button on, bro. You, you, I were, know. you were on fire. It's, God. it's, we have to win today. You realize that, that, right? If we draw, it's over. Of course, I realize that. There's no optimism if we draw or lose. Well, I mean, mathematically, there's always a chance, bro. All right, I'm gonna say yeah, that. We're not, the day I we're not, we're not doing that. We're not doing that here on the Sunday summary. Oh, we're not doing nah. math. We're not doing nope. real points. Nope. No, of course not. Why? Why would we do logical things? Because Man City is crushing teams, and so is Arsenal. Man City beat Palace four two. It's not crushing. They let in two goals. But did you watch it? I didn't. They destroyed. They scored like three goals in a in a span of fifteen minutes. Changed the whole game, suffocated them. It was insane. Michael Ramsey, what do you got for us today? Rubbish Dom. Now, to be fair, I don't remember you talking about Rubbish Dom. But, Michael, you're not wrong. If you did, you're right. All right, dude. Table time. Table time. Oyvind, close your eyes. Premier League table time, guys. Man City with that win. They go top. Game in hand. Two points above Arsenal and Liverpool. We both play today. Arsenal against Villa and us against Crystal Palace, who are in 15th. Oh, my God. I did not I did not know Palace were this poor. What the hell happened to Palace, dude? They're so bad. Brentford Injuries. is a poor. Is it injuries? Is that what it is? Everyone's got injuries. It's got to be. It's got to be a big part of it. Olise's been hurt here and there. Yeah. Oh, God, bro. We need the win. We need the win. Alor says Pals have only won one of the last nine league fixtures. 3-0 home victory over Burnley. Um, I told you Rubbish Jones should have started over. Jeez, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, where in the world are you? Yeah, Michael, where are you at, man? Uh, Kenny says, best case, we win, Arsenal lose. Dude, I freaking hope so. I, I think best case scenario for us, honestly, and like maybe the most realistic scenario is Arsenal draw. Are they playing Villa at home? Um, uh, Let me see. Uh, yep, of course they are. Jesus. Villa, I need something from you today, man. You're not just going to come in and hang around in the top four and then get smacked by Arsenal when we need you. Dude, I need not that you good. to show up. All right, St- Steve, come on, man. They're not, dude, their goal differential 17. Yeah, what? Yeah, you're right. It's not that good. I know it's not. I know. They have a good manager. They have a solid core group good of evening. players. Um, good evening. I'm just not going to invest in Aston Villa to get a result today. 
here we go. Oyvin, yes! Member for 33 months. Thank you, Oyvin. Not only for that, but for this goat comment. Tonight will be a good evening. I Dude, does he say that in every press conference still? I I don't know if he said it every time, but... Villa have dropped off as well. Yeah. Referees. I Dude, that's one thing I never check, just so everyone knows. Like, I'll see it on Twitter or something, like who's refereeing, but I know the names, but I don't... I personally don't care until they make a really bad decision. And then I'm like, oh, that guy sucks. It, we shouldn't worry about the referees. We really shouldn't. All right. In in my optimistic way of thinking, every referee has a job to go into a game unbiased, right? At the end of the game, then you can make a decision. But don't worry yourself over the referees before the game even starts. Don't give the referees an opportunity to make bad calls. That I had a coach say that once. He was like, just don't let the referee have any dictation over the game. It's... Pull that back up. Oh, damn it. I just closed it. <laughs> wait, right, wait. Wait, wait. The the comment? I want to say, I want to pull up. Uh, oh, Liz gifted a membership. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Liz. Derek says, is it just me or do we struggle against every team in the Premier League? No game is an easy game and City and Arsenal make it look easy. This is kind of what I've been thinking. I just don't know how to say it. Um, But yeah, you're absolutely right. We haven't, like we've scored 72 goals this year. But I don't feel like we're scoring a ton. I'm sure if I look at the results list, there of course there's yeah. three, four, five, whatever the case may be. Um, but a lot of those have come late in games. I feel like how many comfortable oh, wins dude, have we had from start to finish? There haven't been many. Yeah, that's a and great it's, point. It, it's very, easy. very stressful. And it's we made it's behind. made this. It's made being a supporter laborious this season to some extent. <laughs> um, and then when you think about the mistakes from VAR and from the officials, the referees, like there's not much wind left in the sails. I feel like we should be up. Somebody said it last week, eight points, seven points, nine points. If those decisions weren't a thing now who knows who actually knows but i'm just like i feel like you're right arsenal and city make it look easy they win these matches very very comfortably and even though we dominate possession um somebody had mentioned it earlier here maybe it was oyvin that we had like a record amount of possession against sheffield yeah but that's just because we have better players and the reason we beat the reason we should beat a lot of teams is because we have better players. If you have a better side, you're going to have more possession. If you have better quality in your starting 11, you're going to have more possession. That doesn't amount to much though, because we still look vulnerable on the counterattack. Um, But yeah, I, I say that just to say that we need a comfortable win. We need to build a streak of comfortable wins and get momentum. Because it's really, really hard to rely on late goals to win when you're in a title race. Because if it doesn't happen, the margins the, the margins of for error are so, so fine. Um, and you can't leave it to chance with these referees, like you said. I will agree 100% that this season we haven't had those blowout wins that we've had in the past. Maybe there's been a few in there. Um, like I know against like Wolves, I think we won like 4-0 like once uh, or something like that. But... Dude, in the past, we've blown teams out more often than not. In this season, you're right. We play from behind way too much, way too much. And it started last season. It started last season where we did find ourselves playing from behind. But this season, it's been pretty chronic. That's not a good habit to, to get into. And especially now with the Atalanta having to go away and score at least three goals possible, but you're making it stressful on us fans, man. You're decreasing the li the life the the lifespan of your fans, and that's not good. That's not good for the organization. Real quick, I want to touch on some of the team news before we wrap it up here. And guys, don't forget, join us on Tifo for the watch along. I will post 
the link to the watch along here. And again, your referral code is Kyle in all caps. Come support us over there. Seriously, guys, really appreciate it. But real quick, I want to uh, go over some of the team news. So I know you, if you guys haven't been following the Luis Diaz links this week with a move to PSG with Liverpool valuing him at about 75 million euros. Um, however, the latest is that we're considering offering him a new deal this summer. Apparently he's happy and um, he would be happy to renew with a more important offer. I think he, after this season, I think he may deserve a new contract. One, uh, you know, it's good for him to keep him happy, uh, but two protects his value and likely be able to sell him on at uh, an increased rate. I think we keep him around because a probably knows him uh, from his time at Porto and, Personal, I, I just feel like it's good to keep Luis Diaz around. Plus, we don't have another left winger, dude. We can't play Darwin over there every time. And, and God, well, you got Jota. I, I guess, but he's a pure left winger. Diaz is a pure left winger. You know, we don't I sell like players. That. He's not going anywhere. We yeah, don't no, sell I know he's not. So that, so that's that. Um, additionally, the news with uh, uh, Ruben Amorum was that a landline? What the hell was that? Yeah, that's my iPhone. Um, oh alarm. Jesus! Um, but there were reports earlier in the week that I reported on that Liverpool had offered him a three-year contract. I saw reports the very next day that said there was no contract offer, and this is all from the same guy, Pedro Sibaveda, Supo Veda. All right, all Amorim said guy. that himself. He said no Say agreement, no talks. Amorim yeah, yeah, said that said, himself. He said no talks. I'm going to finish out the season here, and then we'll figure it out. Um, and so a lot of the latest stuff, okay, is that like here, you got all negotiations go. This is what I was talking about. It's completely false that Ruben Amorim was interviewed or had any direct contact with LFC. He's focused on winning the title, right? But look, same guy, same guy. LFC offers Ruben Amorim a contract for the next three seasons. So this guy's not in the know. He's just reporting what he hears, just like us, okay? So... It sounds like he's in negotiations, but the latest on it is that the president of Sporting CP is considering failing to failing to the verbal agreement for Ruben Amorim to leave for a fee below the release clause. Just for not being criticized by the fans, this could trigger a discomfort inside Sporting. LFC wants to close the deal. I don't personally care about the president of Sporting. Um, Hugo Viana, no idea who that is, maybe his assistant, could also leave Sporting CP at the end of the season if Ruben Amorim doesn't stay, and LFC will be aware of that. Richard Hughes, the sporting director, um, will be the new sporting director, but Viana could fit Amorim's staff. Interesting. Okay. So, I mean, there hasn't been much movement on this since, you know, we had that, like, three-year contract BS, I guess. Uh but that's where we're at, guys, now. And, of course, if there's any movement on that, I'll let you guys know. But it does seem like this is going to be the next guy unless something drastic happens and the deal falls through. Well, we thought that about Alonzo. Yeah, but that was more of a – we didn't really hear, like, there's a contract offer on the table. It was more like Chabi Alonzo would fit right in and different people saying they think Chabi Alonzo – are going to move to Liverpool over Bayern, that kind of thing. And then Chabi came out, and the first time he addressed it, he said he's going to stay at Bayer Leverkusen. So the odds are Amorum, most likely, then Nagelsmann, then Deserby, and then Tuchel. Um, and then Tottenham's manager, Ange, and then a bunch of scrubs, or a bunch of people that just have very, very low odds. A bunch of scrubs. Um, oh I want a Morum because I feel like he hasn't been at a massive club yet or at, you know what I mean? He hasn't been bounced around like some of these guys like Tuchel. I think he's a good manager. I don't really know what's going on at Bayern, but I don't want him because he's I don't been want everywhere. a journeyman. I don't want yes, a journeyman. I don't want that. I don't want that. We're I different. Not... We're a different club. When you come to the club, the idea is that you're coming to the club to build a career, Right. I honestly feel that way. I feel like, you know, of course, that's not always the case. Sometimes you have to fire managers after a couple seasons. Brendan Rodgers, case in point. You got Roy Hodgson. You got all these different guys, right? But 
I agree. We're just a different club. We're not, we're not Chelsea. All right. Steve, matches time is coming up. Closing thoughts. 3 1. Win. We go down oh, early, God. don't we? We go down early, don't we? Most likely. <laughs> I mean, I, I've been saying no. If you would ask me that question most of the year, I'd say no, no, no. This is the game we don't. But I'm done fighting reality. It's I've been lying to myself. If we go down one nil, I won't be surprised whatsoever. No. And then it just not. makes for a stressful watch for the rest of the match. I want to enjoy this. <laughs> I like enjoying matches. I don't like being Seriously. stressed the whole time. Yeah. Seriously. Liz goes four nil. Guys, again, join us on TIFO over there in about five or ten minutes. We'll be over there. Here is the link. Double agent. I saw you in the uh TIFO chat as well. Your referral code is Kyle. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Steve, thank you as well for being here. Hopefully we go on and win this match and climb back up to the top of the table. Until next time, Reds.